Okay, so welcome to Leading Edge Dog Shows Academy's grooming classroom. Um, here is the schedule. So like I said, uh, we're gonna start off by going through maintenance techniques, products, and then thanking our wonderful distributors and friends that um, helped out. Um, then we're going to do a Q&A of things that we have already received. So those are included in the slides. Then we're gonna do the live Q&A, which is on the chat. And then we're gonna do the Q&A via webcam. And you know, don't worry if you miss out on any of this, it is being recorded. You will all get an email copy of the recording when we're done. And uh, yeah, so if you're missing out on a part, um, if the dog needs to be let in or out or something, it will all be on the recording. So don't forget that. All right. So one of my favorite things that I like to do is use a vision board. And um, this is something that we can all do right now. There's a lot of downtime. We all have smartphones. And a vision board is a tool that I use to track the progress of my dog's trim, the condition that it's in, and also to make a goal of how I want them to look. So, you know, most of us trimming dogs, we are visual people and a lot of people, you know, when I do seminars and they'll say, well, my dog just doesn't look like, they can't really describe what they want it to look like. And if you can't describe or you don't have a complete vision in your head of what you want your dog to look like, there is, it's just going to make it that much more difficult to get there, right? It's like baking a cake is fairly easy with a recipe really, really hard with no recipe. So that's kind of what, so even if your vision board just starts out, if you have um, an affin pincer and there's lots of beautiful affin pincers being shown, find one that you like the trim that looks really beautiful, even if it looks nothing like your trim right now and like put it in your grooming room beside where you just like print that photo off, put it up there, right? Like that's the place to start with a vision board. Have a vision of what you want your dog to look like. Um, so you can do this for your dog's trim, their muscle condition, how, you know, what you want them to look like weight and muscle wise. So like I said, you can print, start this by just like print, ripping a photo out of a magazine, printing off photos of dogs that you like, and then print off photos of your dog and put them beside them. Maybe print off a photo of your dog and like using a Sharpie, um, fill in where you need to either grow hair or remove hair by stripping or scissoring to get the ideal look for your dog that you are going through, right? Um, you can send photos to me. So this is something I do in my VIP groups where people will send me photos of their dogs. I mark it up with a stylist, say, this looks great. This needs more hair off. You need to grow this in. You need to change this angle. So that is a service that we do offer. Um, you can have friends do it too, because sometimes we just get into, you know, like we see our dog every day. So we get into like a little bit of a rut. Um, if you don't have an access to a printer right now, you can do it online with Google Slides, Canva, call, you know, those collage apps, anything. Um, we do have a vision board course uh, and it's only $9 if you wanted to see our vision board course. Um, and it's also included if you subscribe to our school. Um, and like I said, it is a service that I offer where I will, you can send me a photo of your dog and I can say, do this, don't do that and show you exactly what I would do. And we can follow it up week by week. You know, you can do it before you trim your dog and then after, but before the show, just something to work on. Um, so here is an example of uh, how I used a vision board. So the first, I wonder if I can have a pointer. Okay, yeah. So this first photo here in the upper left-hand corner, how did I get a pointer when I did that? Anyway, in the upper left-hand corner, that's where we'll start. Um, and so that's what she looked like. She arrived and she had been bath and dried before somebody sent her and she basically looked like a buffalo. So this, the next picture, so here, the next picture is if you're reading a book to the right is that exact same day only we had bathed her and trimmed her ourselves right so from that picture i can see i need to change um, her rosette grow her tail bigger and i'm imagining what her hair is going to look like when she sprayed up so then a few months later if we go to the bottom left um that's the first time we showed her and you know you can see that there's 
some roughness that needs to be tidied up. Again, the tail still needs to be bigger. And in October, I actually like marked up that, like I wanted her ears bigger. I wanted more fill in her top knot. Her rosette moved up slightly and her tail bigger. And then this, the last photo that you see, the fifth photo is what she looked like in December. Um, that's a wind photo. And that is, um, a picture that I would now use as what I would go for, or if if somebody had a poodle who was related to my poodle, a picture that I might send them to say that this is, you know, the trim that you could work towards, right? Um, so just something to think about. That's how I would use a vision board. Um, so this obviously can be done for any breed, but even if you just start with um, this is um what i want my dog to look like right so even if you just start with a photo of this is what i want my dog to look like and it's another dog just something for you to go towards a recipe a place for you to go that is the very first place i would start with my vision board okay so um now we i've had a lot of questions about this and it's using conditioners versus using coat oil so uh, coat oil is something that I personally don't have very much success with. So a lot of people with like maybe poodles, Portuguese water dogs, um, they would use oil and they would mix up oil. And once they washed their dog and they conditioned it and rinsed it out, they would then pour the oil all over the entire dog. And I don't like this method. I have never had very much success with it. I find that it clogs up the skin surface. Um, it, they can be smelly, they can go rancid. It makes dogs coats not be as insulating. So they get colder in the winter and hotter in the summer, which is something I am very aware of. And to me, once you start taking the oil out, you are causing more damage to the hair. So anything that you saved by putting the actual oil in the hair, um, you are, re you know, any conditioning benefits that you might have gotten or you think that you've gotten, you've taken it away by the harshness of the detergent that you have to use in order to get that oil out of the hair. Now, so to me, this just basically makes zero sense. As well, you know, conditioners are um, smaller, lighter, they can actually get in between. So if you think of the hair shaft, like the hair shaft is like kind of like scales on a fish and the hair shaft, the scales can be more open, which is when the coat is usually more frizzy. And conditioners will help seal that cuticle where oil just sits on top of it. Um, that's another thing I don't like about oil. I also, I also don't like oil in my on a dog that's in my house because everywhere they lay down, they leave an oil slick, right? So their dog bed is oily. If they sleep on your bed, if they sleep on your couch, even a spot on, they have a favorite spot on the rug that can just become an oil patch and that isn't very good. Um, if I do use oil, so say I would maybe use it on a very damaged um, setter coat or something, or even on a poodle coat, I'm going to mix that oil very lightly with conditioner and I'm going to just spray it on the ends of the coat to help protect a coat that I know, you know, that dog's going to be out in the field a lot, et cetera, et cetera. And um, when they are out in the field, like that might protect the ends of the coat, but I do it while I'm drying them and again, only at the ends. So I'm going to demonstrate with my little model dog what I do instead of using oil for a dog that needs deep, deep conditioning. And I'm going to go live again and show you on my model dog. So this is the first. So Katie, can you see me now? Yep, yeah, that's good. Okay, and can you see uh, Fifi, the model dog? How's that? Yep, that's perfect, right? If we just down a little bit more, that's perfect. Okay, so if this was our dog, and um, so yeah, because I had so many different breeds, and I thought that we would use a model dog, so this is Fifi, my model dog. So this is what I would do. So Fifi here is, would be bathed, and I would use like uh, rinse all, you know, Bathe them. I would use at this point if I'm going to do some deep conditioning, a clarifying shampoo um, the, as my bathing. So like a clean start or something that just really like strips out 
all of the dirt and just like any conditioner or oils that wasn't working for me. So with the hair toweled dry, so not dried, I am then going to use a deep conditioner wherever I really need it on my dog. So a deep conditioner that I might use is something like um, Spectrum 10 Hypro Pack. I might use uh, Miracle Cream, you know, whatever deep conditioner you have to just like as a treatment. So then, I'm going to use it quite generously. So for each section of hair, I'm going to use like, um, this is probably like a heaping tablespoon and I'm going to work it in my hands and emulsify it. And then I'm going to put it like where, so like on a poodle type coat where this is the damaged coat, I'm just going to like, I would use this much like say on the head, then I would use that same amount on the neck. Then I would use that same amount in like three or four sections down the back, the back of the tail, and the back of the hawks, also a place on poodles that they often need extra conditioning. If this was a dog that had more traditional furnishings like a terrier, then I would use it on the legs, wherever there's furnishings. On an Irish setter, an Afghan, a Springer, an English Cocker, I would work it through this, wherever the furnishings are really damaged. Like a lot of times on boy Springers and setters, you know, it's in this pee area here. Um, a lot of times for girls, it might be on the pants where they get urine on them and the coat gets burnt. If you have a dog, we have a question of this coming up that maybe the bib hair is sparse. I'm going to use that. So same thing. I'm going to use that same heaping tablespoon and I'm going to use it like I would use probably two handfuls on the bib. And I'm using it in my hands first because I think the warmth of your hands um, helps to emulsify the product and just helps to really activate it. Um, and keep it nice and warm as I'm distributing it through the hair. Basically at this point, you can't use too much of the product. Okay, so now to recap, my dog has been washed in a clarifying shampoo. It has been um, towel dry and now it's on a grooming table on one or two nice towels and I've worked that heavy conditioner through my dog's coat. Okay, so say you're stuck at home and you don't have access um, to some kind of heavy conditioner, right? You don't have, you can't get Hydro Pack or Miracle Cream or something like that. Use your regular conditioner, just use a lot of it, okay? Like use, use what you have. You could, if you are somebody that uses cholesterol to chalk your dog, you could use cholesterol. Cholesterol is a great deep conditioner. So those are all things that you could use. So once I have that conditioner, like really, and I'm gonna work it in, with my hands, right? Like I'm gonna work it in to the section. If it's the furnishings, I really am gonna work it into those furnishings, right? So I'm gonna use one handful here, one handful here. You know, maybe I need some in the armpit, the bib, ears, right? All those things. Then I am going to use a simple white, uh, this is a garbage bag. So it's a white kitchen garbage bag. And I'm going to, so it's important that it's white. That's the only thing that's really important about this whole concept is that it is white. I'm going to unfold it. And then, you know, hopefully my dog would be laying down. Uh, Fifi here isn't really good at laying down. And I'm also afraid that if I make her lay down, I won't be able to get her back up. So then I'm going to take my white bag and I'm going to put it over, obviously not over her little face. And I'm just going to put it everywhere that I have conditioned her, right? So if, um, if it's, a poodle, I'm gonna lay it on top like this, or I have an ease or something like that. A setter, I might like wrap it around. So like, especially the more damaged areas, maybe you need three bags, right? Of those white bags. So the bag helps to hold that condition in, right? So this is like a hot oil treatment. Then I'm going to use a large bath towel. I'm going to get it wet with the hottest water that I can stand, because it's gonna cool down quite quickly. And I'm gonna wring that water out of it. Then once the water is wrung out of it, I am going to put it again over top of the bag, make sure you leave the head exposed and cover up all those areas, right? So if it's, you can even have it like even as much covered as you possibly can. So I'm gonna unfold this, put it over like this, right? So it's really, really covered up. And then I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna have my hot dryer. So if I have a stand dryer, I'm lucky I can just have the stand dryer on hot. And I'm gonna sit here and I have the stand dryer like going down on my dog um, for about 15 minutes, right? And I'm gonna sit here because I'm gonna make sure my dog isn't overheating. Uh, I might be on my phone scrolling through Facebook. You're not gonna leave your dog alone. Um, and 
you're just going to be here. If you don't have a stand dryer, use your hand dryer on hot. And again, you're just going to be working through it for about 15 minutes, right? Then when that is all done, you're going to remove this. You're going to put them back in the tub and you are going to rinse that out. Now, this is a maintenance thing. It's not for the show bath, right? Like this is your complete maintenance bath, not a show bath. So I would, for me, I would rinse that conditioner out about 80%, leave about 20% of it in and then dry as normal. Now, if you, you could rinse it 100% out and then just add your normal conditioner in there. If you were worried about having the heavy conditioner in there, for me, that's just an extra step. I'm not going to do that. I would simply um, rinse it out about 80% and then add back in. All right, so I hope that that makes sense. If you have any questions, you can put them in the question box and we will go back. Now I can't find my slides. Hmm. There they are. You have the, yep. you got it? Yeah. Okay. I just, because I didn't leave a picture up, I didn't know where it was. Um, so there, okay. So our next slide. Okay. Um, so this applies to everyone, but especially poodle people right now. Um, basically there shouldn't be a poodle puppy that um, is more, there's nine months or older that is still in puppy trim, right? Uh, let's face it, there's probably not going to be any dog shows in the next two to three months. So it's time to put them in Continental. Your Continental is going to look better. It's going to be good practice for you. There is um, absolutely no reason for your dog not to be in Continental now. Um, and it, it, it's just, and you're going to have less hair to groom, right? So like I'm talking now, like once you get off this webinar, there you that's what you should do. So the same goes for other breeds. If you're if your puppy has a trim that will, are going to be that's going to be upgraded for being an adult, you need to do that now. Um, poodle people, if you've never tried out English saddle, maybe on your way to Continental, try doing an English saddle just to see if you can get there. Right? Um, advancing to the next slide. For some reason, it doesn't want to do that. There we go. Um, so now we're going to talk about trimming or letting the hair grow out. For me, I would want to, I would put all my dog shows in a really tight show trim. So I'm not going to let it grow out and get crazy. Um, as soon as it starts growing out, they get split ends. Split ends are damaged. Um, so basically you're going to get your trim, like you're going to trim it and then you're going to trim it a little too much. That's what I mean by a tight show trim, right? So there's lots of places where dog shows have been canceled for up to five months. Um, I often talk about sizes and now it is take time to take down the size on our show trims. If you are um, nervous about doing this, at least get rid of the hair that you know you're got, not going to need, right? So belly hair, I think belly hair is something that people leave too much on their dogs anyway. So the insides of their back legs and the belly hair, now it is time to get rid of that. Also, if you have, um, a, a terrier and you have never chalked it or you've never put colored chalk in them like an Airedale or a wire fox terrier or something or a Norfolk or a Norwich. Um, if you have never chalked a face on one of your other dogs, if you've never done up your F and pincers head or their legs or there's a thing that you have wanted to try, now is the time to try it, right? Because now is the time to practice, especially before those maintenance baths. Um, spray up your poodle, like do all those things that you want to do. On the other side of that, it is now also time to send in your scissors to be sharpened, right? Like mail them away, like your favorite, favorite scissors. So like, I can't do without these scissors. Well, right now you can. So like send them in to be sharpened. Um, so trimming the ends on top knots and ears. So for me, this would also go for trimming the furnishings, um, the underline, like on a Springer, a Cocker, a Setter, um, American Cockers, um, Havanese, Sheet Tzu's, all those drop coated breeds. Um, you want to get rid, rid of any sparse or see-through hair, and this will only help you, I absolutely promise. People get freaked out all the time about trimming off some of the extra hair, and this is something that I do on a, 
a weekly basis with my dogs and people tend to not believe that I actually do it on a weekly basis. Um, I don't know why, but I absolutely do. So this is uh, something that I am going to demonstrate. Oh, there's my phone that I am going to demonstrate again here on Fifi. And I'm going to stop sharing. And so there is the talented Fifi. And does that look good, Katie? Yep. Okay. Good. So what I mean by trimming off our dog's ends, right? So if we look here, and if this was my dog's top knot, well it is, it's Fifi's top knot, and can, can you see that the hair looks really thick till about there? And from there up, it's really thin and sparse, right? Well, we don't need that because that really doesn't, um, it just makes our trims look unfinished. Um, typically, this is a brushing error. Like if this wasn't a real dog, this is probably, you know, because the coat doesn't get automatically thinner at the end. And literally what I do is every time I wrap my poodle, so once a week, I literally take, I'm going to get my arm in front of you, I think, which I want to avoid. So I would literally take, I always take, say take off the see-through bit. So I'm literally going to take that much. Oh, these scissors aren't very sharp. They need to be sent in to be sharp. And um, I'm going to get us another pair of scissors. I don't know how that happened. Because typically my scissors are really sharp. Um, so I'm going to take off the ends of my coat just like this, right? But for right now, I am going to take like a big, I'm going to take off everything that is see-through. So that's like all of this hair. I'm going to take all of that off. And can you see how it just automatically makes the coat look more, it looks thicker, right? It looks thicker because I have taken off all those ends. So the same thing, you know, if this was a setter or a spaniel and I'm trimming the underline, I am going to trim every week, I'm going to trim a little tiny bit of the underline, but right now I'm going to cut at least one finger off, right? Same with um, a Shih Tzu, something like that, a Yorkie, I would comb all the hair out and I would take off everything because you want this nice blunt edge because that's the hair that's in better condition, right? Um, and if you have questions on that, you can send those questions in because sometimes it is a hard concept for people to get that it does just actually make it that much better. Um, stripping and removing dead hair. So, there is obviously four to six weeks um, in some places before there is going to be a dog show in other places quite longer. So if you do have a dog um, that does get stripped, now it is time to really keep up on removing all of that dead hair. And if there is a breed that you are um, wondering how long, you know, if I strip out my Airedale in stages, how long will it take taking that hair really short before it's ready to go in the ring? Well, now's the time to, to make a chart, right? Make a chart, figure out, okay, if I stripped it on April 1st, um, by April 10th, there was new growth coming in. And by April 20th, um, I had to start shaping the hair. And by April 30th, she looked good enough to go in the ring, right? So you can use this as a guide to how often you strip the coat. This is really useful for new people or, you know, you're working on new dogs and you don't understand that some hair, like sometimes like on an affin pincer, the head hair took so long to grow back in compared to stripping out, you know, their saddle or in front of their tail. Um, now is also the time to remove dead hair so that there's always a new layer growing in. So this is it, something that I also preach even we, when we don't have a downtime, but there is a school of thought that when dogs start to lose their coat that we try to hang on to it for as long as possible and that is the opposite. I don't want you to hang on to your dog's coat. I want you to get it out as quickly as possible. So that means stripping it with a stripping knife, um, a coat king rake for like your Siberians, your double coated breeds. Just keep that dead coat coming out all the time. Another thing that I like to do is, especially if I notice something you know, like a Samoyed, a Siberian, a double-coated breed, or even like my Golden Retrievers, if they start blowing their coat, is I'm going to have a spray bottle of just maybe a tiny bit of conditioner, but mostly cold water. I'll even sometimes keep it in the fridge, and I'm going to mist that dog quite heavily 
um, with the cold water once a day and go through it with a cold dryer, like a force dryer and get out all of those little dead hairs. The sooner you get that dead hair out of there, the sooner the new growth can come in. And that even short new growth looks better than dead old growth that's starting to fall out in the ring. But now if you're one of those people that has never subscribed to that way of thinking, now is the time to do that. Now is the time to try that and just see how much better your dog looks and also how much quicker that new hair comes in. Sorry, I need a drink of water, I'm talking too much. Okay, so clipper lines. So Portuguese water, water dogs, poodles. Um, <clears throat> if you're trimming all the time, this is when your clipper lines start to migrate. So all of a sudden your rosettes are smaller, all of a sudden the jacket has moved too far up, all of a sudden the lines on the face are all wrong. So I want you to stop about one inch or about, I always say a finger width from where the clipper line actually is, right? So you're gonna use those small strokes with the clippers and you're going to stop about one finger away from the actual clipper line. Because every time you go up to the clipper line, if you slightly go over it, then you try to make the whole line neater, you've just completely moved your trim in not very much time. Um, so here are some products, etc. Um, that I recommend for general maintenance. So um, I am a big, huge proponent of Clean Start shampoo, um, any kind of clarifying shampoo, because I think we put so many products into our dogs at dog shows as well. There's just environmental pollutants that our dogs are around that I like to strip it right down. Um, that being said, the other products that I really like is I like the day-to-day -day shampoo and day-to-day -day conditioner because they have colloidal oatmeal in them. So they are fantastic. They are moisturizing. Um, they do a good job of getting your dog clean, but still leaving enough moisture in the coat. Um, Miracle Cream is like a seven-in-one cream. It's great for doing your dog out at the dog show. It's great for adding to your coat, like using the plastic bag method, like I showed you, as is Spectrum 10 Hydro Pack. Both of these can be added to your regular conditioner. If so, say you like your regular conditioner, you find it's light, it works, et cetera, et cetera. But maybe for a certain dog or a certain area of the dog, they need a little bit more moisture. You can easily add either one of these products to your conditioner or you can spot condition with them. Um, peace and Kindness Spray and Gel. So Peace and Kindness is uh, colloidal silver. It's 30 parts per million. Um, it's really great for any little ir skin irritation. If you think your dog's getting a hot spot, if you think that you've stripped your dog a little bit too tight and the coat looks irritated for reddening between the toes where your dog's been looking between the toes, um, it's great for for eye infections. It's great for, you know, the flaps on French bulldogs around their tails um, and bulldogs just for getting that nice and clean. Uh, peace and kindness shampoo, same thing. It's a great, it, it is peace and kindness for your dog skin, right? So anybody that has irritated skin, their skin's a little dry. Again, this could happen from just stripping your dog. You know, you're stripping some dogs. It takes a little while for them to get used to being stripped. This is great for white poodles or cresteds or anything that gets that clipper irritation. This is a great product. Um, as well, Mystic Ear is, um, Mystic Ear is, fabulous for obviously cleaning ears and just divine brushing spray is just a great general brushing spray okay so we're going to move on uh, uh this is going to be emailed to you this presentation um because it's in the zoom recording so these are some of the distributors and partners that helped to put this on um and most of them um, have some kind of special going on. So if, if you order, so we've included people from all over the world. If you order from them, most of them are either gonna give you free shipping. Some of them have different contests. I know Whitman's is putting a free gift in with everybody that mentions that they were at the webinar or entered in the virtual dog show. So we would like to thank all of them for really supporting us.
and in that way also supporting you. Um, distributors and partners, uh, Whitman's is giving away a free gift with every sharpening order sent in and also Tie Brush is giving um, every re webinar registrant one entry to their Beacon Hill, which is a really awesome uh, cordless grinder. And if you place an order with them, you get an extra entry. I just had to mention that. Um, and as well, if you don't know, I do have Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, which is an ever-growing library of dog show knowledge. So basically, it's video. So you can watch over and over and over again. We have ebooks, videos, diagrams. Also, you have access to me to send in photos. Um, that's how you get to us is leadingedgedogshowacademy.teachable.com. Um, you can get our Winner's Circle subscription, which is just everything in the school, as, as well as um, premium bonus content, which is only for our members. And right now, you can use the, com the code at home 35. So, at home, all capitals, the number 35 for 35% off anything and everything that we have. Okay, so we are going to move on to the Q&A. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please give us a like, and if you haven't already done so, you can subscribe to our channel below. Also, check out leadingedgedogshowacademy.com for our premium content. We had a lot of fun bringing you all this information. See you soon, bye.